Hi, this is Dr. Gregory Sadler. I'm a professor of philosophy and the president and founder of an educational consulting company called Reason.io, where we put philosophy into practice. I've studied and taught philosophy for over 20 years, and I find that many people run into difficulties reading classic philosophical texts. Sometimes it's the way things are said or how the text is structured, but the concepts themselves are not always that complicated, and that's where I come in. To help students and lifelong learners, I've been producing longer lecture videos and posting them to YouTube. Many viewers say they find them useful. What you're currently watching is part of a new series of shorter videos, each of them focused on one core concept from an important philosophical text. I hope you find it useful as well. One of the central preoccupations of Descartes' work, the meditations on first philosophy, is discerning what happens when we make mistakes. He wants to ultimately not only avoid making mistakes when it comes to not only the true and the false, but also the bad and the good, but to understand the source of errors. His hope is to eventually develop a philosophy that, unlike the other ones up until his time, the way he frames it, would be free of errors. So this requires understanding what happens when we go astray, which is what error means, right? Errare is to, to go astray, to lose the path, the path to truth, the path to what is good for us. So <clears throat> in considering this in meditation four, Descartes is going to start out by telling us what error is to begin with. And he says that early on, it's a kind of deficit, a default, right? A lack, a manquement in French, or more strictly speaking, it's actually not those just by themselves, but rather a privation. And privation is a metaphysical term that means um, the lack of something that ought to be there, that, that in that kind of thing, would normally be present. So, you know, a classic example is of being blind. Being blind is a privation for a human being, but it is not for an animal that lacks eyes, right? Or a plant. A plant isn't blind or sighted, right? Um, so what is the privation of? The privation, what's lacking, is knowledge, connaissance in French, that should be there in the mind, in the human mind. <clears throat> That's what leads us to go astray, to mistake the false for the true or the bad for the good. And Descartes is going to tell us that it happens not in a simple way, but because of a concurrence of two, and he calls them causes. Now, neither of these, we should preface, is by itself a cause of error. These are two faculties, two powers, as he says, within the human being, the human mind specifically, that of understanding, entendement, right? The part of us that, that, that not only conceptualizes, but also makes sense of things. And then the will, the volonté, or uh, he also uses as a synonym for this, uh, libre arbitre, right? Both of them more or less function the same way in this work. And so you have to put these two things together. Now, when you do that, you get something else that Descartes here, uh, you know, and he's not the only philosopher to think about things this way, calls a judgment. So... This is a very important point. We often think as if error is something wrong with somebody's mind. They just simply lack knowledge about something. That's not enough to be error. Or they've got mistaken ideas about something, right? Ideas that don't correspond to the reality of things. So let's say they, for example, think that um, the reason why everything is going bad on their farm is because witches have cursed their farm because the witches are, are jealous of their, their productivity, right? So, well, there are no witches. And uh, even if there were, um, your farm isn't really that productive anyway. So you're working on false information. For Descartes, that false information isn't just false because we 
it doesn't map onto reality, we misunderstand things. It's because on some level we affirm that to be the case. So this is a very important clarification <clears throat> to make. We have to have this concurrence of two causes, as he says, in order to make mistakes. So the understanding is part of this, the entendement in French, it's the power of conceiving ideas. And the understanding doesn't actually tell you whether those ideas are true or false in the sense of conforming to things, say, outside of our mind, or even um, true or false in the sense of, you know, being completely consistent. We still need the, the working of the will. And this shows you just how important the will actually turns out to be in Descartes' philosophy. Um, we often talk about him as being a rationalist, an intellectualist, and all that. And that's true. Um, he is a rationalist. He does think that the human mind does have some incredible capacities. But it's the will that actually has greater power than the intellect. As a matter of fact, what the understanding or intellect does is proposes ideas to the will. It says, here's what I got. What do you think about that? And we might also roll in, as Descartes mentions, our memory and our faculty of imagination as well into this, this understanding. Descartes makes a distinction between imagination and understanding a little bit later on. That turns out to be important. But the point is, all of our cognitive faculties merely provide ideas, merely produce ideas. They don't actually take a stand on whether those ideas are true or false. What does that? The will, the will, the volonté, or libre arbitre, is a capacity or power, un pouvoir, to choose, élire in French, to elect between options. To, now notice how important this is when we think back to what goes on in meditation too, and the entirety of you know, thought within the cogito, <clears throat> to affirm or to deny, assert, you could say, right? Uh, deny, um, to, to reject intellectually, to say, I hold this to be true, I deny this to be true. It also uh, provides us with the capacity to pursue and to avoid. That is in terms of the modality of goodness and badness. So if I think something is good for me, or I, you know, I desire it because I, I'm judging that it's good, then I pursue it. Uh, I can also choose to reject or avoid it as well. So the will is what does this. The intellect is quite limited in its power and scope, <clears throat> Descartes tells us. But the will, in fact, has such a great scope, such a great power, that he says that in a certain way, uh, if we use the biblical notion of being created in the image and likeness of God, that's how we're created so. Not by uh, the, the you know, rational faculty as such, which was an earlier way of thinking about this. It's rather in that we have an unlimited will. Our will can extend to things that don't even exist. I can wish that I had and have a desire for an ice cream flavor that does not yet exist but is so much better than every ice cream that I've tasted up until this point, right? I imagine some crazy concoction like that, and my will can extend out to that and go even further than that and say, I want something even better than that, right? Uh, our will by itself doesn't actually have limits. And we might want to think about what could provide the will with, with limits. Whereas the intellect or the understanding, all sorts of limits. There's all sorts of things that we don't know, all sorts of things that we'll never know. So we've got these two faculties, <clears throat> and they're, they're quite different from each other, but they're working together all the time. Here's how we get to the source of our errors. How does error actually occur? So Descartes tells us that the will extends itself to, to things that we don't actually understand, right? beyond uh, what it is that we, we do understand. And that's what gets us into trouble. Um, we, uh, we deny things, we affirm things, we pursue things, we avoid things. 
without having an adequate grasp on the ideas, according to Descartes, that, that you know, we're working with. So this is a big problem. Um, the will, he says, will choose the bad in place of the good or choose the false in place of the true when it goes beyond uh, what the understanding can provide it. So this actually suggests to us what it is that we might do with our wills in order to avoid falling into error. We should probably restrict ourselves to limits of our understanding instead of affirming things that we don't actually have clear and distinct ideas about, or at least some probability, some good reason to think that that's the case, or perhaps we could derive from previous principles, right? We should stop short and say, I'm not going to, to will that. I'm not going to affirm it. I'm not going to deny it either. Because to swing to the other extreme of denying things that go beyond the realm of our current understanding is equally as foolish and equally as bad a use of the will as to affirm them. And it's very interesting that Descartes uh, goes even a little bit further than this. He talks about uh, a certain kind of indifference, right? He's you know thinking about the things that he's discussed so far in the meditations. And there's this passage where he says, um, I suppose that I don't know any reason that would persuade me more to one than the other of these things, from which it follows that I am entirely indifferent when it comes to denying or affirming, and then he goes even further, or even to hold myself back from giving any judgment. This is, in a certain respect, as thoroughgoing a skepticism as one could have, but it's conceived here as the proper use, proper disciplining, proper limitation of the human mind by the will itself choosing to do this sort of thing. And so he thinks that if we do this, we can actually avoid falling into errors in judgment about the existence or non-existence or the nature or the goodness or badness uh, or connectedness, cause and effect, whatever it is that we're considering, we can avoid falling into errors about the things that we think about.